Good afternoon and welcome to this week's edition of Webinar Wednesday presented by the Library Corporation. My name is Jameson Reynolds. I'm the Director of Marketing Strategy with TLC. Today's session is a session entitled, Not All Heroes Wear Capes, Becoming a Legend in Virtual Learning. Uh, the session description is, who doesn't love playing games? TLC has partnered with Legends of Learning to help librarians and teachers create fun and productive learning environments through research-driven curriculum-based games. Using ongoing original research to create a marketplace filled with an epic range of curriculum-based games for stronger subject mastery and classroom or virtual classroom engagement, this adaptable and comprehensive ed game platform can easily be launched throughout your entire school system or right from your library. Today's session is going to be presented by one of our partners over at uh, Legends of Learning, uh, Sean Riley, uh, Reedy, excuse me, Sean Reedy, AKA Nerd Dog. Uh, Sean, uh, please take us away. You got it. Excited to be here. Thank you all for having me and thanks for joining us today. We're gonna have a whole lot of fun. I'm gonna bring a whole lot of excitement, so I hope you're ready and uh, we'll laugh along the way too. So let's get this party started off right. So here's what we're gonna do. You may see some familiar faces on the right-hand side here. I have some favorites in there. I wanna know what is your favorite game? So we're gonna start with a little poll and have you guys answer the poll. So go ahead and answer. What is your favorite game out of the, 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 the ones that are listed there? I know my favorite is uh, my favorite is Mario Kart. I love the little cloud that when I fall off a of rainbow road, it picks me back up and it drops me right on where I'm supposed to be going. And I just keep on going because that, that's the beauty of games, it's the power of games, right? You see Donkey Kong's on there. My son plays Donkey Kong on the old school Nintendo that we have at our house. So much fun. Um, so awesome. Excited to see uh, and hear what you guys. Uh, Jared, I forgot that I'm not able to actually see that, but that's okay. Um, maybe Jameson can actually share the results, if you don't mind sharing the results. In case people can't see those, Sean, we've got uh, Legend of Zelda at 26%, uh, Mario Kart at 35%, Galaga yeah. at 5%, Sonic the Hedgehog at 14 and Frogger at 21%. So Mario Kart wins the race. I love it, Mario Kart, that's my, that's, that's my favorite, I love it, that's awesome. All right, very cool, I, I lo love to hear what your guys' favorite games are. We, you know, Games are one of those things that bring back that nice nostalgia. Um, so I wanna welcome everyone. My name is Sean, AKA Nerd Dog. So I'm a professional cape wearer. You can't see me, but I do have a cape on right now because I'm constantly wearing one. Um, I taught algebra in, the book in New York City, in the Boogie Down Bronx and in Harlem. Um, I also uh, made some, some rap music uh, while I was doing that. So uh, my students didn't always like algebra, but they loved music. And so I combined the two and made math rap videos. So I have really embarrassing YouTube videos out there. Um, students wrote the lyrics, they helped produce the videos. They got really excited about math because of it. I'm also a former executive director of a K-8 school in Southeast DC. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders and director of district partnerships at Legends of Learning. So very excited to share to you today, uh, with you today, what we have uh, to offer. So um, a little more fun, uh, a few blasts from the past, and you guys mentioned a couple of these. Um, so Frogger, right? We all remember Frogger. I remember playing that with a little joystick, trying to get my way across, uh, get the frog all the way across in its little, uh, little cubby hole. And Sonic the Hedgehog, classic, right? My son actually discovered this and we were driving down to Florida uh, a couple of weeks ago and to visit uh, his, his grandma. And all I keep hearing are the, the rings being collected in the background. I'm like, it, it like expands, you know, across all, spans across all generations, right? And just these games that we love. Now, this is, this is kind of a funny dance move. And my question is, you know, what game is this then? Is this in? I know you can't type, but just you know, thinking out loud, what, what game is this? In? I'm gonna pause and give you a second. Now you've heard of it, you may not have played it, but you've heard of it a bunch. Okay. 
And the winning answer, whoever said it out there, I'm sure one of you did, is Fortnite, right? This is from Fortnite. Students love the dance moves in Fortnite. They love building their avatar, right? Students just love games. There's actually even a, a loser dance that is like the most popular dance to get. And it's just so much fun for students. Now, who remembers this from years ago? Dying of dysentery from Oregon Trail, right? Such a classic that we all remember. We don't remember our fifth grade textbook. We don't remember the fifth grade worksheets we did, but we remember going to class and wanting to return to class just so we could play Oregon Trail and dive dysentery again. So why are games such a great resource? Because students are willing to take more risks when they're playing games, right? They're willing to fail again and again and again, right? The student doesn't play Fortnite once and then that's it, right? They don't play, or you don't play Oregon Trail once and then that's it. You, you keep coming back for more. You wanna try again and again. And in doing so, you actually build a confidence level, right? Where you feel confident in the material. And so that, that games, that, that risk that students take actually builds a confidence uh, and a knowledge base for students, which is powerful. The other thing is games provide equity, right? They pro provide an equal program for all students, right? Because students are able to access in, in schools and libraries, right? They're able to access Chromebooks or laptops. And, and in many cases, most have mobile devices, right? And so they can play games across all these um, different uh, options. And some really important that as we're, as we're, you know, building students and, and, and helping them grow, right? We, we want to develop those soft skills. So how do games do that? Well, as I mentioned briefly, right? It allows students to fail and try again and again and again and again, right? It allows them to learn problem solving and critical thinking skills and developing new strategies as they're doing it. Games are systemic. They can take it and apply it in many different settings. It provides continuous feedback to players. So they're constantly understanding that I do something right, that I do something wrong, I'm able to go back and fix it and understand what that feedback is and change based on, on that feedback. They pro provide players with the need to know knowledge and skills to then take that and, 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 and you know, beat the game. And this is really, really critical, right? Players are introduced to a new way of collaborating and communicating with peers, right? I watched my, my, my son with his two of his two of the neighbor friends, and they were playing Donkey Kong. And the one student, the one, the one uh, my son was playing, and the other two were literally trying to explain to him what he needed to do to try and get to the top of the game, right? Because they're constantly working together and collaborating when they're playing games because they want to help each other win. It's a pretty powerful uh, experience. So I've talked a lot about the power of games. I've talked a lot about um, kind of the impact that games can have. Now I want to talk about it from an academic setting, right? So we saw, it, we've done a number of research studies. This is one we did nationally with Vanderbilt University where we saw a dramatic improvement um, in, in outcomes. So this was across a thousand students, seven different states, um, you know, urban, suburban, rural settings, high performing and low performing schools. Um, and sh not, sh not too surprisingly, I I'm gonna take a guess, if you gave students the option to learn via video games or traditional curriculum, what do you think they'd choose? Video games, of course, right? What are they, what are they playing at home anyways? They're playing video games, they're playing Call of Duty, they're playing Grand Theft Auto V or whatever they're, you know, whatever one it is now, right? They're constantly playing games. They're willing to, to try these games and fail again and again and again, right? Um, you know, and I go back to the example of Oregon Trail. Like I was wanting to come to class to play Oregon Trail. Um, and, and in building that uh, from that failure to fail again and again and again, building that confidence level, I actually saw a huge impact that you see on the right-hand side here learning five and a half weeks of content in just three weeks. That's almost two years worth of growth in one year, which is pretty powerful. And the impact on students with disabilities was actually so statistically significant, it was greater than having a full-time one-on-one tutor, right? And again, that comes from that confidence level, that comes from that ability to, when you're confident, you're able to write longer passages and responses. Um, and so really proven efficacy with uh, using game-based learning 
uh, as as a, a great resource. Okay, so if you're not excited yet, I'm going to get you even more excited right now. Okay, so who are we? Legends of Learning is a game-based learning platform. We have over 2,000. What? 2,000 games? Are you serious? This is amazing. 2,000 games for math and science. Um, also have simulations aligned to state standards. Right? Okay? It's intended for use in K to eight. Um, it's backed by research with Vanderbilt, as I shared. And what it really allows teachers to do is empowers um, the librarians and empowers librarians and teachers to help students learn through the gameplay. So students are learning as they're playing the game. So imagine Frogger, imagine Mario Kart. But as you're going through the game, you're learning math and science concepts. And in order to beat that level or beat that game, you have to master whatever that concept is. Okay. So let's see it in action. So I'm going to move to the platform, but before I do that, I want to understand a little bit more about you all. Um, we're going to have another poll come up, and I'm going to have Jameson uh, share the results with me. Um, and what we're going to do, what we're going to ask is we want to learn a little bit more about uh, games from you guys. Okay, so please go ahead now and answer this uh, poll. Sean, while we're waiting for results to come in, I should tell you, you should warn me in the future if you're going to show a clip of Fortnite. I half expected my 11-year-old to appear out of nowhere asking for V-Bucks as soon as I came on my screen. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, the results of the survey are in, and we have, uh, the questions were, do you currently use gaming at your library? 44% uh, said yes, 26% said no. 30% said no, but excited to start. Nice, that's awesome. That's great to hear, fantastic. Okay, so I wanna show you what uh, one of our games looks like. So um, students go in and they're able to build their own avatar and they can kind of explore on their own. Um, and they build this really cool avatar that has dance moves and all these different things. And then while they're, while they're um, going into the platform, they're you know, they can play individual games, these 2,000 individual games. So I'm going to show you one of those games here. So this is called Fraction Space Tournament. This is a great introductory game on learning about fractions. And so for those of you who remember game, the game, uh, either Galaga or Space Invaders, um, you, you will definitely, this will look a little bit familiar to you. So uh, the games are read aloud. And so we're going to start with holes and the game scaffold very brilliantly. And so it's going to walk me through kind of this Hi. first level here. Welcome to your first challenge. I'm going to turn the voiceover off. Um, and so it's going to walk me through just how to play the game initially. So for those folks who are sometimes scared of math, no worries, because all you're doing right now is just learning how to play the game. And so I'm learning how to fly my spaceship. I'm learning how to collect the different things. And now I'm going to collect 10 circles. So learn how to play the game. A little, little Galaga Space Invaders-esque, if you will. Pretty cool. So I collect the 10 circles. And after that, now it's going to talk to me about the content. So it's going to introduce this topic to me. So let me turn this sound back on. When you have one of something, it is called a hole. Called a hole. A whole fruit. Yep. A whole planet. A whole pizza. As someone who lived in New York and loves pizza, I understand pizza. But if you take away one part, it is not a whole anymore. Great visual for me to understand. In this challenge, you will have to use your tractor beam to catch 10 whole figures. Okay, so in Are this level, ready? I'm looking to collect just the holes. Right, and they're going to be all different shapes, circles, squares, rectangles, thirds, fourths, right? But I've got to collect as many as I can. And the cool thing is, so let's say I'm like, oh, I think that, I think there's a hole. Oh, it's not. The screen shakes and it goes red. So it's telling me with a very clear visual if it's right or wrong, which is excellent. All right, so it's a great visual for students to understand if they're doing it right or wrong. So 
Let's see if I get it in. Ah. Sweet. Awesome. So now I finished this level. Did pretty well. I uh, got three stars and uh, I'm able to continue because I did so well. Now, if I hadn't done um, that well, I would have to retry the level. So this is where I'm talking about it's instruction based and, and you need to master it in order to go to the next level. And when I go to the next level, right, it's now going to take me to learn about different parts of the fraction, right? So, you know, halves, thirds, wholes, or sorry, halves, thirds, fourths, right? And so now instead of collecting break it down for me a whole can be divided in equal parts we can fraction a whole in halves in thirds in fourths or even an ace right for this challenge catch only the shapes that are fractioned in halves are you ready you better believe it why my spaceship all right I'm looking at halves not collecting holes now which i was doing last time That's a tricky one. Oh no. Oops. If I collect the whole, right, it's wrong. Now, catch only the shapes fractioned into thirds. So now I'm doing thirds. Nope, nope. Uh, so cool. I'll get to the force and let's see. There we go, last one. Nice. Now, catch only the shapes fractioned into four. And so it's building on the content. And so it's building kind of over time. And so I'm understanding how the game uh, works. I'm understanding the topic kind of as I'm going. So um, I'm going to go back here. And so I want to share a couple other things with you all. So pretty fun game, right? Where students are playing in this like Galaga-like uh, world and flying this ship, but they're learning about fractions while they're doing it. So, you know, a lot of you said you either are doing it or excited about uh, bringing games into your, your, your libraries. And it's really a win-win for everyone, both in person and virtually, right? So students get to do what they lo already love, which is play games, right? They're playing games at home, like this game on the right here. So this is what it looks like for students. They have this cool avatar they build on the, the, the left here, right? And then they get to use these different cards and powers and battle this, this bat enemy, okay? And they get to learn while they're doing it. And while all that's happening, they're getting real-time feedback, right? We talked about feedback as, as one of those soft skills and how important that is. They're getting real-time feedback on how they're doing on questions, how they're doing within the games, right? And you as, as the library can understand how they're, how students are performing across your library. You, you know, as the teacher, you can understand uh, how, how folks are doing. Um, so you get a lot of that feedback and a lot of that data to really help students uh, grow, grow individually, which is awesome. Okay, so I wanna leave um, some time for questions. And I wanna kind of close out uh, with this. So. Legends of Learning can support uh, virtual learning in a number of different ways. One of the biggest is, and again, this is quick, so I don't have a ton of time to show it, but the student autonomy piece. So students can log in with a, an, an assigned account or an, assigned, an assignment from a teacher or librarian, or they can log in on their own, right? And it's self-paced, student-driven, um, and, and they're, they're, they're learning as they go. We also offer a test prep suite where we can, where, uh, folks can use multiple standard assignments and create custom assessment questions. There's a distance learning mode, right? Where you can track students and see their progress, right? With unlimited assignments. We talked about that equity piece, right? Where there's student directed learning and students are able to kind of go at their own pace. We also have, we also have lesson plans that we include uh, that expand and, and, and meet all students. Blended learning, right? So this is something that's great in flip classroom models or group rotations. Um, the data reporting, I mentioned the grading, the completion, the progress towards mastery. We, you know, data is always important no matter what, uh, what walk of life you're in. 
And the last piece is you're able to share lessons, right? So teachers and librarians can share peer to peer across um, across the, the way, right? So um, that is us in a nutshell. Um, an exciting, a, lo a lot of fun for students. They love their avatar creation. They love uh, playing games and actually learning through it. Um, and so excited to hear your all's questions. Um, and uh, let's kick it off. All right, Sean, thank you very much. That was a pretty exciting session. Uh, there was a lot of great things that we were discussing. We are already getting uh, some questions in from the uh, audience. Uh, what about students that struggle with concepts? Are there built-in tutorials? That is a great question. So actually, almost even better than that. So if a student is struggling and they're getting, um, uh, you know, because the way that it works is it tracks your, your progress. So so this little this little image here, it'll track their progress on an individual topic. If they are if they are not getting, you know, they keep getting a number of questions wrong, it'll actually pop up and say, here's a recommended game that you could play on this particular topic to help you understand what you're not mastering. All right, Sean, we have another question from the uh, audience. Can students interact with each other within the game? That is a great question. So uh, we have an amazing little uh, buddy system where students can go in and they can add their friends that are, you know, whether they're in their classroom or in their school. Um, and so you can you can have uh, this kind of it's called Hero Connect. And so they're able to connect and like see each other's dance moves, see each other's progress and see how, how, how everyone's uh, going. And teachers can create competitions or librarians can create competitions within their libraries, within their schools. Uh, within their school systems um, and see who's mastering the most concepts, who has the coolest avatar, all those fun things. All right, Sean, we got another one coming in right now. Um, give me one second here to read this. Are we able to give parents any data about what students did at the library? Uh, that's a great question. So, um, you know, parents are an important piece of uh, of the library, right? Like, I, I know that I, I get excited when 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 it was open uh, to to bring my student to bring my my children there and have to do reading and whatnot. Um, so the great thing is parents can actually log in and see they can add their own their student and then they can see their students' progress both within teacher assignments, um, but also within uh, you know playing on their own and the student driven component. Um, and so they get a lot of data and a lot of feedback um and and can really work with their students uh, i mean that was something i was really excited about uh myself because you know my son's been playing legends of learning and so to be able to see you know when i'm not you know next to him while he's playing to be able to see his progress see where he's struggling see what he needs support with and see how i can help him uh is pretty pretty powerful tool now uh sean i will say this is for my own um, edification more, I think, than this has not been submitted to us by a question. But I'm just curious, you talk about the student perspective and the parent perspective. Um, talk to me a little bit about the teacher educator educator perspective um, when it comes to, to this uh, Legends of Learning. Yeah, so from the, the teacher side of things, um, you know, it's, it's very user friendly, right? So it's very simple for teachers to, uh, we built it almost like, we built it like a consumer product, right? We don't need professional development on how to use our cell phones. Um, and we built this like in the, in the same way, right? You just kind of figure it out as you go. And so teachers are able to very easily build what we call a playlist and launch assignments. Um, and while that's happening, I'm getting real-time feedback on student performance. Um, and then teachers in schools uh, and even districts actually get summative reporting on how their students are doing across the board. And you can really see the data kind of uh you know as a whole and see where are students struggling how can we best support them what are what are you know do we need to assign more games in a particular category um and so it really gives um teachers kind of that 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 full um full view of uh of the student student experience which is cool that's awesome uh, and on, get top, another... on top of that we had uh we had lesson plans in them uh, in there for folks um which actually include hands-on components so where you can, you know, learn about the phases of the moon, for example, by, you know, eating Oreo cookies, right? And, and learning the different phases kind of uh, using Oreo cookies, which is pretty fun. 
That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, we did get another question in. Uh, does it connect to Microsoft Teams? I see you can connect it to Google Classroom, uh, but we are a Teams organization, a Teams district. Yeah, um, I, I, that is something that we are currently building out. So we connect to a number of different platforms right now. So uh, Schoology, Google Classrooms, Classlink, Clever, Canvas, uh, we connect to all of those. Um, Microsoft Teams is one that we're building out, um, but it's something that will, will happen uh, within the next year for sure. All right, uh, talk about Awakening 2 maybe with self-paced logins when librarians are busy. Yep. I, how about we do one better? Let's uh, let's just show you what it looks like. So I click here on Legend of Learning Awakening. I play on your own. Oh, sorry. Log out and log in. Um, so the cool thing here is I'm able to actually go in on my own, right? So you don't need a teacher, you don't need a librarian. I can go in on my own. I can move at my own pace. So I sign up as my, my son signed up as a kindergartner. Um, and so you go in here and you start at the kindergarten level. And as you're mastering more and more concepts, it progresses me through the content, right? So I come in, I'm going to see my, you know, I can customize my avatar. I can add my uh, different deck of cards. Um, and uh, and then I go into the world and I actually go in and I battle battle different enemies, right? And the more and more I battle and the more and more I master, the more I can level up and power up my character. And I can do that all on my own, right? So I don't need a teacher. I don't need, a, 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 you know, someone else kind of uh, setting the stage for me, if you will. Um, I can do it all on my own. So this is this is awakening. So I'm going in and then logging me straight in. I could go back to the base if I wanted to, but let me show you a little battle here. So I'm gonna battle this uh, this Vesper Geist, I think it is. Um, and so I've got my Captain Lightning Dragon here with my dinosaur hat and my cool uh, boxing gloves and my cool galactic suit. Um, and I'm gonna go in and I'm actually gonna battle against uh, this character here. And so this is the topic that I'm focused on. And again, as I master this, it's gonna progress me through to the next topic uh, based on uh, you know whatever grade level I'm in. So what is the shortest here? Number three, if I get it right, I get a bonus. All right, so I get a cool bonus like this and I choose my bonus. I think I'm gonna go for some health because I'm low on health here. And then I get to go in and I get to blast my enemy. Right, pretty cool stuff. And so students are all about it. And I will end my turn here and see if there is any more questions. Yeah, and I'll say whoever submitted that question must have played this before because I could see why they would want uh, want to see that. That was, <laughs> that was pretty slick, Sean. Not gonna lie. Yeah, uh, I'm cool, gonna right? play that later myself. Uh, can students join on their own, or do I need to support them in some way while they're on? Nope, students can, can join on their own. I mean, you you, you have the as a, as a, the educator, you have the flexibility to either launch something on your own or you can have students go in uh, on their own and, and play on their own. So it's pretty pretty great in terms of the flexibility you have. That's awesome. And I will say we try, we tend to try to keep these webinars at about a half hour. Uh, we are at uh, 3.30 Eastern and this can't be, I can't think of a more appropriate final question than this one. Is there a trial available? Absolutely. So um, we're, we're, we're happy to, to uh, have folks uh, try, try it out. Um, you can go to uh, login.legendsoflearning.com um, and you can try it out for yourselves. Sean, thank you very much for uh, presenting today's session. This was a lot of fun. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for attending uh, today's uh, webinar. We will be recording this. We did record this and we will be posting um, the archive of this to our website uh, usually. Um, it should be here first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, you can find it at tlcdelivers.com uh, forward slash webinars. I do want to thank everyone for attending. Uh, next week's webinar is on the schedule as well, where we'll be doing another product partner session where we'll be talking about the Tap It. Um, I definitely recommend everybody checking that out. Um, I do want to thank once again, Sean um, and the team at Legend of Learning for this awesome resource, this awesome tool. Um, 
I know a lot of organizations that will definitely benefit from something like this. Um, I'm thinking of my own kids um, who are in the brick or click kind of um, toss up right now in school themselves. So I can only imagine how things like this would be viable and valuable to all of them. Um, but again, thank you all very much uh, for attending. Uh, thank you, everyone. Stay safe, um, stay healthy, uh, continue to mask up and wash your hands. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Thanks for having us. And uh, you guys can also check out how to log in on the handout that's included as well. So there's a handout there that'll tell you how to log in and, and check things out and try it out. Thanks so awesome. much for having us. And thanks for joining us today, guys. Thank you. Have a good day.